this whole easy setup that I have is going to create, it's almost too easy for me to be a content creator because I could just hit the record button and go rather than having to mic myself up and do all that kind of stuff. I am added here on Tuesday morning. Had a long session yesterday with the Lewitt microphone that I was talking about trying out um, at the end of my last video. The 440 Pure. It's, a, it's really, so far, it's holding up. Um, the only thing I can say about it is that it's unbelievably neutral. So if you're looking for a microphone that doesn't impose itself on your recording or the sound. I was recording a female vocal yesterday, and that was the one thing I was thinking about the whole time while I was hearing it play back, was that, like, it's not lifeless, because that would be saying that it doesn't sound good. It's just, it's just very true. There is no hype to it in any one direction. It's not super crispy. It's not warm. It's not scooped. Um, yet it's not flat and, and dull. The S's were like literally not even a thought. So that's a quick update on that. Um, then la late last night after I finished the session, I wound up you know, relaxing and perusing the internet, YouTube, of course, and someone made mention that my Sunday rant, ranty video, where I said I was feeling a bit ranty, that that got reacted to on another channel. Uh, and it took me a sec, I know, somebody turned me on to it. Somebody said it's check, check busy with bears. No, Busy Makes Bears. And I was like, what the hell is Busy Makes Bears? It was a misspelling. Busy Makes Beats was the guy. Um, so I found it. And I got to admit, it was kind of funny to see a thumbnail with, you know, a guy doing the whole shocked face thing. And then, like, my picture, a screenshot of my my video behind him. Um, he got... He, to his credit, he, he didn't make, give a, a horrible picture of me. He, like, took a good screenshot. I was happy with the angle, the, color, the lighting. Um, I don't know what Busy's name is. I'm, I'm guessing it's Busy. Um, nice dude, seems. He did his reaction video um, to my 11-minute video, and somehow it was 38 minutes long or something like that. Um, I know I speak slow and, uh, I was having a hard time, like even being interested in hearing what I said and then hearing his reaction. And he, um, it was interesting to me. It's like, it's a, it's like having an out of body experience when you see yourself being, um, reacted to in a weird way, uh, and not that it's weird, but, the, the, you know, it's a common occurrence on YouTube. But it is strange to just see, like, okay, wow, that's what someone's thinking about that sentence. And I don't th I don't think it's an easy gig to do. And I, I don't think I'll be doing any reaction videos to anybody. Like, I'm playing their, like, you know, line by line and going over every little thing that they say. And... I did find that, like, listen, when I made the video of Sunday, I was not thinking there was going to be much of a reaction, to be honest with you. Um, I have a small channel at the moment. Maybe it'll be gigantic soon. I mean, Busy's got like a million followers. It's a big deal on YouTube. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think maybe my thumbnail, which, like, I literally put 30 seconds of thought into and, and, and had a laugh. I think a lot of you that, that enough of you that know me here on this know that I like to uh, I like to have a laugh with some of this stuff. But anyway, uh, so yeah, the reaction thing going 
step by step, word or sentence by sentence, word by word. I didn't, I didn't feel as though that kind of worked because you know the the things in context, like um, you know me saying like, yeah, you're making the same beat over and over again, and it's boom chop, boom boom, boom chop. I mean, I was just basically referring to the idea that like. I don't know if anybody needs to see you make that beat. Like you could just pull up that beat and say like, here's what it sounds like in this thing. Now, I didn't call out who the video guys were. Uh, he also mentioned that, you know, other genres have cliched beats like EDM, rock. Every, every genre has cliches. And one of the guys that did the review of the, or the, demo i guess of the p6 he did a he did an edm beat i could have pointed i just didn't have you know the the energy or the interest to sit there and go you know sentence by or like you know video by video like and this guy did this and this guy did. i think what i'm trying to say with regards to the particularly the down tempo lo-fi hip-hop beat thing is that it actually and what i'm saying by it destroying hip-hop is that like I th it's diluting things diluting things so many times that um it's almost looked at it as like yeah yeah that's the stock beat and that's but but that's not what hip-hop is all about like a stock beat it's about the whole combination of things of the beat the music put to the beat and of course the MC over it, uh, which is the most important part, because yes, every every beat has a kick on the one and a snare on two and four generally, um, and then there's like some accent kicks, and they aren't always just that boom bap thing, even in traditional hip hop or whatever. Uh, the guys that were insinuating that I'm like a culture vulture in some ways, funny. Um, <laughs> he also reacted to me saying something about AES, the guys that go to AES all wearing black clothing and everything. I mean, it's, it's not true. And it's not because like, you know, they're trying to avoid sweat marks or something. Like when he went there, I was like, okay, this is, uh, I was joking around about the idea that, you know, so then the AES thing um, yeah, my complaints about the new gear or like particularly like stuff like what Abbott is doing with what they're introducing, they are, I mean, my opinion, they're just running out of ideas to sell us on this subscription plan with. And they're just, you know, hey, maybe enough guys will want um, stem extraction, click removal, noise removal. I get it. You got to keep, you got to stay in business. You got to, you know, keep the subs happening, keep the, keep people in the ecosystem of, uh, Avid, which I've been in. I've had an Avid system. If you want to consider that digit design, I've had some form of an, of a digit on digit design system since like 1996 with an audio media three card. So I've had my share of their, little crumbs and cookies that they throw us here and there. And like I said, I mean, it's a great program. They're all great in a lot of ways, in their own ways. Pro Tools has its fingers, you know, it has its grips on a big part of the industry because it, for mixing, for recording too, it's, it's a beast. I mean, They've got, it, it's gone through cycles where Pro Tools was like really unreliable and crappy at recording and crappy at uh, MIDI and all these things. And then like it just it goes in waves. And I think the wave that it's at right now is that like it's behind on a lot of the innovative production things and even the recording mixing things, the integration um it's just quirky. I can get on Logic or Studio One 
and get jealous really quickly of like, hey, wait a minute, maybe I should be going this route. So let me get back to a little bit to the and then he, the stems explanation. I was like, I don't care why anyone wants to use the stems or if like that's a big important thing to you that you need more content sources to make beats. That's cool. Um, the whole thing overall is, is, uh, it's funny to me. I don't think he really understood or got into the understanding what I was talking about with regards to OBS and pro tools and the, and having to deal with that integration. It's because I'm trying to, I would like to do some, some, um, demonstrations in OBS with pro tools and getting, and then with a, a USB microphone, which like that's a whole part of um, the conundrum with Pro Tools. I'm not going to watch every sentence that I say on these type of videos because in thinking that there's going to be a reaction to every sentence. And I hope that it's, you know, the, the videos that I do will be taken as trying to keep things positive or trying to inspire a little bit of like, hey, don't, don't get caught up in the content creator thing that you have to um, watch these videos and think like, oh, that'll be it. That's, that'll be the, the machine that I could, that I'll get, that'll, have me make a that'll help me make a beat that will turn me into the next Jay Dilla. You could do it with what you have. It's fun to learn new things. That's that's why I was checking out the P6 video. Is that I saw a couple of things come across where you know in your feed or whatever. Um, there was enough of them. I I don't know whether I don't think Roland sends these things to everybody for reviews, like some of the camera companies do that. But uh, there were enough P6 demo review videos that came through my feed that where I, I said to myself, like, what is this, like a new thing? Maybe it's interesting, maybe it's fun. Um, I went to a couple of video guys that I, or content creator guys that I have seen do some decent things that and for me, and um, I took the bait, watched, had a little thought about it. I hope you guys appreciate that. Um, there'll be more, especially with my easy rig. The fact that I don't have to go through any hoops to like make these things up <clears throat> is somewhat dangerous. <laughs>